in everybody. So I'm taking you back to Europe and uh, stories of slaves. So in temperate Europe, uh, biological studies have been widely developed in these last decades. And uh, they are a source of uh, increasingly well-documented information on the environmental dynamics of interglacials. So what are the characteristics of interglacial monoclonals and how a comparison with other proxies can provide a reliable reconstruction of landscape and climate are the topics of this talk. So first, I will speak about the common points uh, of these uh, interglacial monoclonals. I have taken the example of the Song Valley, which has been widely studied uh, for a long time and provides a very nice record of uh, the evolution of the uh, malacological book over the last million years. And uh, here, uh, malacological uh, taxa are distributed in different uh, ecological groups, colored groups, and plotted against the diagram of the vegetation evolution within a climatic cycle defined by biologists. And obviously, you can see that what is the characteristic of interglacial malacophonas is the very high diversity and the presence of forest species. So if we compare how these forest species appear in different interglacials, uh, we can see that there is a common pattern of, of distribution and evolution of these families. Uh, first, uh, before they arrive, the first um, interglacial malacophonas are an increasing diversity but uh, doesn't have any forest species. Then they began to appear and they develop very rapidly and uh, they have an optimum diversity during the climatic optimum of the interglacials. These are the common feature to the different uh, temporal periods. Um, but the order of appearance of these four species is important, and among them, uh, there is a particular mention need to be done on two species belonging to the genus Discus. These are uh, discus rideratus, which is the first one, and which is followed by discus rotundatus at the beginning of the interglacial. The first succession was uh, identified in the Olsen sequences. And um, these two species succeed uh, in time, and sometimes they are recorded together, but when it is the case, then the, the first Ruderatus shows a declining population while Rotundatus is expanding. At some of these Olsen sites, we were lucky enough to compare the monocological record very uh, to the palynological one, and the shift between the two discus is correlated with the decline of the pine forest and the expansion of corpus. So what you need to know also is that Rideratus today is a boreal alpine species uh, living in coniferous forest, while uh, Discus rotundatus, the second species, is a forest species distributed largely but in middle Europe and uh, only reaching north, not, not more than the south of Scandinavia. This uh, discus succession appear also in oldest sequences and then because of what we have been determining in the Olsen ones can be interpreted as the, as the transition from coniferous forest to deciduous forest. Now let's see the differences. The differences are mainly linked to the occurrence uh, among these forest species of what we call allochthonous species. 
which means species which are out of their modern range. And these species are particularly uh, numerous during interglacials. So they can appear as just single species can characterize a complex of interglacial, which is the case of Danusia during the Cromerium, or you can have a single species uh, which occurrence is limited to a single intergrassa. This is an example of Aegopis during stage 9. But most interesting is that some interglacials can be characterized by a group of species, by assemblages. And this is the case for stage 5e or stage 11. And stage 11 is the better known of this, or better defined of these um, malacological assemblages by uh, the reddish fauna in aquatic habitats or by the diodiscus assemblage uh, in terrestrial ones. Uh, to this, this example of the diodiscus is, is the most uh, interesting that we have uh, now. And it, is, um, it has been recognized over a bunch of sites in uh, Northwest Europe, Northern France, and Southeastern England, in sites where it has been, which have been dated by different uh, radiometric uh, methods uh, and allocated to stage 11. The, the um, uh, assemblage is composed by a bunch of extinct species and uh, a group of species which are now beyond uh, their modern range. And they defined a very peculiar environment biotope of forest, uh, humid, very, very dense humid forest. And among these sites, uh, there is one particular which is interesting, is La Selle in the Paris cuisine, because it is uh, the site is a tufa of several meters thick and it provides the longest record of this uh, appearance and development of this diodiscus fauna. So, at La Selle, uh, the composite malacological diagram allowed to identify four environmental uh, steps. The first one is composed by an assemblage of marsh and open ground, and then the forest species appear and they develop very rapidly during the second phase. And during the second phase, the discus successions allow to identify uh, the first episode of pioneer forest and followed by the spread of the deciduous forest. Then there is the maximum diversity of this forest taxa corresponding to the optimum of, uh, of the interglacial. And finally, the fourth phase shows a strong decrease in these forest species uh, while some iofilus uh, taxa expand and allow to define an episode of forest decrease, forest humid uh, episode. Uh, so this has uh, on this diagram are plotted the occurrence of this only the forest taxa. And uh, because this story of the cell is very detailed, uh, it can be used as a model to set in the other record, the other anthropological record of stage 11, in order to provide um, a relative chronology inside the interglacial which, of course, is not reachable through with the radiometric method. So using uh, the order of appearance of, of these um, forest taxa and the level of diversity of this assemblage, uh, these different uh, other sequences can be set in the model of the cell. So Santa Schell and Arrest appear at the end of the, the phase of forest development. Uh, Vermont and St. Pierre's above correspond to the maximum development of the Lyotis assemblage. 
and the sites, the British sites, which is Britain, the Ichim, are still in the phase of the optimum or but during the phase of when the, the species are occurring less regularly as in the first part. And finally, the upper part, oh, sorry, the upper part of vernal segments correspond also to this, the phase of declining forest extension. So here we can um, so define this uh, very uh, more precise chronology inside the uh, uh, Pleistocene of the glacier. So now let's move to other indicators uh, uh, to be compared with the morphological succession. And here I must say a word about two files. All the sequences I have presented before are coming from two files. Why snakes and two files? Obviously, because they are composed of uh, calcareous. And uh, so they are very um, favorable to the development of the malacological population and to the preservation of shells. But two fuzz are also interesting because they can preserve and fossilize a bunch of other uh, groups uh, like ostracods, mammals, leaf grains, and so on to be compared with the malacological record. Uh, they can be dated by especially old tufas directly, uh, by a bunch of, um, of method. And last but not least, <laughs> tufas can provide a climatic record through studies of isotopes. And this is the work of Julie Berkowski, my author. And so using tufas, using models and isotopes, uh, we can uh, provide reconstruction uh, of uh, the interglacial dynamic for all the areas. Uh, if you consider today the, the, all the tufas that have been studied for my ecology, they are quite numerous, but uh, they are not distributed equally between all the periods, and the best records are for stage 1, 11, and 5e up to now. Uh, and among those, uh, stage 11 uh, are the, the best documented. So I go back to Nacelle, which is now very familiar to you, and uh, you've understood that this is my favorite site. So, just a quick slide to remind you these five uh, forest environmental steps marshy ground, forest development, forest optimum, and forest degrees. Right. So, this is you have this in mind. Now, now you have here on the right again this malacological record with in brown the appearance of the layer discus form, and on the left are the records uh, provided by the analysis of the isotopes. So, at the beginning, uh, the, when uh, corresponding to the expand of this forest um, biotope, the isotopes show an increasing temperature and increasing humidity. Then um, the maximum, uh, the climatic maximum recorded by isotopes, the optimum, correspond to the, opt the maximum development of the layer discus fauna in the biological record. And during the second part of this optimum, when the microfaunas uh, show uh, occurrences of, of species uh, less regular, uh, the isotopic record show a decrease in temperature and uh, irregular uh, humidity uh, box. And finally, the, the last period, uh, when the forest is strongly decreasing, then we have uh, the climatic signal very uh, coherent with a, a strong decrease in temperature and um, increasing humidity, which corresponds also with the development of hydrophilus snakes. So, I, the, the next step we've done uh, is to compare uh, this uh, lesson, the biological succession, with 
the long pollen, the, the nearest long pollen because of, of the stage 11C. Uh, so let's say the Paclo sequence in central France and the Bouillon in Germany. And um, here in this figure, uh, for the pollen, are plotted only two curves to simplify the, the comparison. And the, 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 yes, I'm nearly finished. <laughs> Um, so you have the curve for, um, for the pioneer trees, uh, pine, and the curve of tender trees. And what you can see is that uh, on both pollen sequence, the shifts from the pioneer forest to the deciduous forest uh, correspond to what is seen in the morphological succession at the set, at the beginning and uh, after the the interglacial optimum. Uh, more than that, there are two small um, episodes in the Bedlingen uh, sequence of uh, extension, new extension of pioneer trees, which have no uh, malacological answer in uh, Atlasel, but uh, we have in the, in the stratigraphy. Uh, identified two hiatuses, and maybe we can, well, we have still to work on it, but maybe there is something to, to say about the correspondence between this hiatus and this stop in the development of tufas and uh, some uh, microclimate or, or whatever environmental changes within this uh, stage uh, 11. So, to conclude, um, it's, um, I hope, I have convinced you that uh, thanks to SNAID plus isotope, it's possible to uh, reconstruct a very accurate climatic and environmental uh, dynamic of uh, places and in the glaciers. And concerning particularly the site of, of La Selle, uh, we are now proposing it as a key record site for MIS 11C uh, record continental reference for Northwest Europe uh, because in this area uh, we have no, no concrete accumulation and no lake. So the fluvial record is uh, one of the, our best chance to get some reference sequences for these periods. Thank you very much for your attention.